chaotic. That's how I would describe this Manchester City Liverpool match. Were Manchester City lucky to get a draw against Liverpool? That's true. That is really simple. If you look at the stats, if you look at the game, Liverpool probably should have won easily 3 0, 4 0. But it's a pre Copa result. United has done nothing all season. The only thing they have done well is to ruin Klopp's parade. And I'm so glad for it. I did not want to see Klopp going on a high. And now, we have knocked them out of FA Cup and we have taken four points away from them in a title race. And that's huge. I'm so happy for it. Yes, it's sad that this is what United has become. That we're getting happy over the fact that we can stop Liverpool from achieving something. That we are achieving something ourselves. But in a season as bad as this, we have to take every small win we can get. Every small victory we can get. Yes, we did not get a win, but it's a huge result against one of the top teams. Everyone calls Net to one of the worst teams in the league. One of the worst teams in Europe. And yet, Liverpool couldn't defeat us. What happened? I thought Klopp was a mastermind. I thought Klopp was a genius tactician. Why couldn't he defeat it the whole season? It's just so happy to see Liverpool tears. Like, out of all other teams, all other fan bases, there's just something special about Klopp's tears, about Liverpool fans being salty. I'm sure there will be people commenting in the uh, video down below saying about 7 in and stuff. So, what if that was last season? Last season, Liverpool finished below us in like 5th to 6th. And this season, we have stopped their quadruple parade. Let's just talk about the match itself. This United team is getting carried by the youngsters. It's a senior pros who are letting us down. Menu 18, Garnacho 19, Hoyland 2021, Kambwala 19. These are the players who played well in this team. You look at Bruno, awful game. Casimiro, awful game. Bisaka, awful game. Rashford, awful game. So, our senior pros are the ones letting the team down. And that shows how rotten the club is. Let's take a look at their performances. Bruno probably had his worst first half I've ever seen him do. He couldn't pass, he couldn't shoot. I don't know what was he doing. Every single pass he tried to make intercepted or like just off target. The problem with Bruno is, first half, one of the worst halves he has ever played. Second half, much better. And that goal he scored, the chip from the halfway line. That shows that Bruno has the quality of a world-class player. But he's doing too much in this team. It feels to me like Bruno is trying to make up for the mistake of his teammates. And that's why he's all over the pitch. He's running around. He's showing his spirit, putting in tackles, putting in blocks. But that's not a number 10's role. Yes, that's a captain's role, right? To be everywhere, to motivate people and stuff like that. But as a number 10, that's not what I want a player to be. I want my number 10 to be forward, to be up ahead and to be a creative threat, which Bruno is currently not. So I think Bruno is really, really burnt out. He probably is playing with the injury as well because you just see him limping all the time. So he is forcing himself to play through this for the team and I appreciate that. But at some point, I want Bruno to be a rested mode. At this moment, Bruno is doing everything except play as a number 10. Then we have Casemiro. Again, one of the worst performances I've ever seen him do. He looks like a shell of a player. Every single Liverpool guy was just going past him easily. He couldn't pass, he couldn't shoot. He, the only thing he was doing is winning headers. And Casemiro was lucky not to get a red card when he made that tackle on Luis Diaz. He could have easily gotten a red card as well. And he had so many chances to clear the ball. But every time he just sent it back to a Liverpool player. Straight up it. Casemiro went from being one of our best midfielders last season to a shank this season. Whether it's injuries, whether he's not interested, whether his legs are gone, I don't know. But with the performance he's been putting in this season, I think it might be better to just move him on. Then you look at Pisaka. Bisaka was having a really bad night at left back once again. And then he gave away the most stupid penalty I've ever seen. He had just seen Dalo do something similar against Chelsea. But he didn't learn from it. For some reason, he decided to do a lunge. And to be honest, I don't think it's a penalty, right? But if you're going to ground in the penalty box, 
and if the player touches you, there's always a chance they'll be get given a penalty, right? If this happens to United, we won't get the decision. But of course, because it's Liverpool, they get it. This shouldn't even have happened. I don't know why did he decide to slide that game. And if that's not enough, we also have people like Rashford, who once again didn't know. This team is getting carried by people who have barely made their debut. Kambuala, debut season. Menu, debut season. Karnajul, last season, he had a debut. Hoyland is his first season him. Right? This is a spine of the team and it shows how much there's a need of a rebuild. Because this team cannot do anything going forward if we keep these same players. I'm not saying that only the players are at fault, right? Even Ten Hag had really bad tactics. Like, I don't know why we're we playing in a formation where it's a high line and we are not pressing. So it's like we were just stuck in the middle. We couldn't go forward, we couldn't defend backwards. And that's why Liverpool found it so easy to break on us. As soon as they got through our non-existent press, they were through on goal. Not only are we being set up in a weird, weird way, we have another burst in when it comes to set pieces. I don't know how was Luis Diaz and Mark near the six-yard box. It happens every single game that we cannot defend a set piece. And we don't score them either. One of the worst teams are set pieces in Europe. So our formation is bad. We suck at set pieces. And then we cannot handle position. Every single player in that team handles the ball like it's a ball. Like I don't know why they are in, su- in a such a hurry as soon as they get the ball. Casemiro gets the ball, one touch, pass it away. Right? Bruno gets the ball, one touch, moves it away. We do not have position type players, right? This is honestly one of the worst United teams I've ever seen. And the stats prove it as well. There is a need of a rebuild. But it remains to be seen if Ten Hag will be the head of this rebuild or not. Because, yes, we got it all. I'm happy with the result, but I'm not happy with the performance. It was a bad performance overall. It's not all negatives. Let's look at some positives as well. On Orana had a great game. He made a really good save at the second minute where he did that spider save against uh, when we were against Diaz. And then Dalo, he had a decent game. Not, nothing special, but none. But nothing bad as well. Kamwala had a really good game. For a 19-year-old, for his second start in the league, I think he played really, really well. Against one of the toughest oppositions, he held his own. And that's pretty good to see. At a time when we are out of defenders, when a lot of defender shakeup needs to happen in the summer, I'm so glad we have a academy graduate who can probably play a bigger role in the future. Maguire also had a pretty decent game. Yes, he got outpaced a few times. He was not in the position of few times. But he put in some vital blocks, put in some vital tackles, and he had a pretty decent game. Menu, of course, with a wonderful goal. He was getting outrun in the midfield, and that's pretty obvious because Liverpool have a pretty good mid, and they were controlling the game throughout. And as usual, our midfield were getting outnumbered. He took the ball, he turned, and then just spinned into the top corner. The girl on that was crazy. Another thing which I saw during this game is that people are criticizing Rasmus Hoyland. Like, I don't know what's going on with this fan base. This guy is his debut season. He's our only striker. And he's playing in a team which doesn't do anything for a striker. And yet people are criticizing him. Like, what are you expecting him to do? He doesn't get through, through ball. He doesn't get crosses. The only passes Hoyland is getting is 40-yard long balls. Right? And that too, they are expecting him to win those 40-yard long balls against Van Dyke, who's one of the best in the world at that. It's game after game, the same story. Rasmus has only had one shot in the last three games. Like, is that acceptable for a striker to have only one shot in three games? And that's not even his fault. Our players do not create enough. And even if they create, it's not for the striker. They create it for themselves. And that's the sad part about it. And of course, it won't be a magistrated game without more injuries. Two more injuries. McTominay injured. Rashford injured mid-game. Like, it's just so frustrating that that Gary Neville, our own legend, is saying that injuries doesn't have an effect on the team. Like, what is he saying? I think Gary Neville is like Andy Ten Hag. He has been Andrew Tenag ever even before Tenag was being appointed. So I think he's trying to destabilize him. And I don't know why. 
another thing to consider is that in the last three games, we have been in winning positions in all three. And we have dropped points against all three of them. Let's not consider the fact whether we deserve to win or not. The fact is we were in winning positions. Against Brentford, we needed to hold on for two minutes. We drew. Against Chelsea, we were in winning position. We needed to hold on for three minutes. We lost. Against Liverpool, we needed to hold on for 10 minutes. We drew. So we could have gotten nine points. I'm not saying we deserved those nine points, right? We were awful in all three. But in at a point when we could have easily won, caught in nine points and be in a top four race, we dropped points against all three and we don't deserve to be in Champions League. I don't think we can even finish sixth at this point because there's a bigger gap between us and Spurs in fifth than us and Chelsea in ninth. Right? That's how crazy it is. My only expectation from United this season is to finish 6th to get to Europa and at least not embarrass ourselves in the FA Cup final. I don't know if we win that, but I just hope we don't embarrass ourselves. At least, that's all I'm hoping for the rest of the season. Because it's not like the tactics will improve, the tactics will change. It's too late for that. There's just 6 games left, 6-7 six, games. Before we end the video, I want to talk about the tactic race. I want Arsenal to win it, right? I do not want City to get four in a row and maybe uh, another treble. I do not want Klopp to win it. I do not want Klopp's farewell season to have another title. So I'm really hoping Arsenal do it. The only problem is they're coming to Old Trafford in the second last game. So if we defeat them, they might lose the title. So it's like a paradox. So I hope Arsenal can win the league. To check my match reaction against the Chelsea loss, right? And how frustrated I was. You can click on this video right here. And if you have liked my content so far, then I would really appreciate it. You can click on the like and subscribe button below to be a part of my community. I will see you all again after next week, I think, when we have our next match. Thank you for watching so far. Goodbye.